NUS Medicine actually strives to produce medical and nursing students who are future ready and able to value add to the patient care. There's a project called the Virtual Interactive Human Anatomy, where students can actually learn anatomy through virtual reality softwares and how to triage a patient in a virtual environment and to treat accordingly. It's just this very closely knit support system with your friends and we also have seniors that is always there to like help you out. The school actually actively tries to build that around you through encouraging house bonding, for us to connect with each other. Neighbourhood Health Service aims to bring health service to the needy population to like reintegrate them back into the healthcare system. Year 1 and Year 2, we are in the classroom, we are in lectures. But in Year 3, like, we go into the wards, we see patients, we go on attachments, we see things that we wanted to see when we applied to medicine. I feel that the human connection, being able to be there in someone's suffering, even though you haven't gone through it, but we are reaffirmed of this, like, this want to be a doctor. Students learn basic knowledge about nursing and the nursing skills. However, here in school, we provide them opportunities to practice those skills on high fidelity mannequins. They will be able to practice those simulations when they go for clinical rotation at the end of each semester. Interprofessional education, I would say that's the highlight here at NUS Madison, where our nursing students and medical students, they work together, they learn together about each other's roles and responsibilities, and especially their challenges. That prepare them better when they go to the clinical practice and collaborate with each other. Medicine is always changing, and these changes can generate new ethical challenges. And we want to equip our medical students with good ethical reasoning skills so that they can recognise the interests that might be conflicting, and that they can reason in well-defendable ways. Person-centred care is about responding not just to what's gone wrong with them in terms of illness, but responding to them in an ethically appropriate way as another human being who has their own ideas on what matter to them, their own perspectives on what's good in their life. Our young doctors, they need to learn new points of view so that they can think out of the box and come up with genuinely innovative solutions for any issues that they face. One example of how we try and deliver a broad-based education is through this programme that we call the Medical Grand Challenge where we tell the students very simply, look out for a healthcare need that is currently unmet and then look for fellow students from the other faculties so that you can get a diverse group of ideas about how to approach the problem and then together as a team working collaboratively in a free-form self-directed way that they can learn the ability to collaborate, the ability to be collegial and the ability to be creative as well. So we are looking to produce people with great potential and with great curiosity to go beyond the field of medicine to see how they can truly help society. NUS Medicine um, has been heavily involved in research into human biomedical science for you know, many years. But in the recent years, we have focused a lot on how this research will be relevant to tackling cancer, metabolic disease, diabetes, heart diseases, I think NUS is also very unique because we are a truly comprehensive university. So, for example, the integration with engineering has led to the development of a number of new devices that has led to our ability to detect very early stomach cancer, even before it's visible to the naked eye. If you're doing translational research, the commercialization of this research is a very important step so that the product of your research can reach all the patients who need these new therapies. NUS, besides being a top academic institution, has also a hospital which is world-class, with world-class specialists. And they know how to deal with all the potential side effects of the new therapies. What we do is that we have developed a technology to help you to diagnose early stage cancers. We didn't set out to start a company. We're not doing this for the sake of the money. We're doing this because there's impact and we can do good early on, save lives that way. The vision of the school is to inspire health for all. 
And in terms of mission, that means that we are, like to train doctors and nurses whom people want to take care of their own family. So people that you can trust completely. And then we want our researchers to come up with real solutions that will improve health for everybody. There has been the perception that the leadership comes from the US and from Europe. And I think we have to progress a bit from this mindset because we have a top-class academic institutions, wonderful students, a world-class hospital, and so we can be the leaders. This culture of uh, doing research should be ingrained in our DNA. I think if everyone can think that way, then the institution has a certain energy that is palpable, right? And it generates a kind of excitement. Technology is going to be a very important aspect of healthcare. So our students must be very comfortable collaborating with data sciences and artificial intelligence. Ultimately, we still need to see how in all this advancement, our students will continue to have empathy. I always tell my students, do something, work hard for it, because what you do can be translated and it can touch the lives of society. That is what we should do. If you ask me what I want is for the school to be the happiest place on earth. And I think happiness comes from being able to make a change that matters.